Pediatric Visits Lecture. Well Child Visits. The frequency of well child visits varies with physicians and com the community. Some physicians will see a pediatric patient at one week, one month, two months, six months, 12 months, 15 months, 18 months, two years, five years, 10 years, and 15 to 18 years old. But it really varies depending on the physician and then also the parent. Visits focus on maintaining the child's health through basic systems examination, immunizations, and upgrading of the child's medical history form. Medical history is an essential guide to the pediatric examination. Immunizations are a very important part of the well child visit. The CDC recommends immunizations against infectious diseases for all children. Reason is a registry for effective communicating immunization needs and it is often used in many medical facilities to track the immunizations a particular child may need. Vaccines consist of attenuated organisms, attenuated meaning weakened or changed, and their toxins, which results in the body producing antibodies against a specific pathogen. All vaccines are tested for safety and effectiveness but side effects do occur in rare instances. It is important when we administer immunizations at the well child check to provide a copy of the vaccine information sheet to either the adult patient or the child's parent or legal guardian. Give the parent the most current VIS available for the particular vaccine. Document in the child's medical record the date the VIS was given and the publication date of the VIS, which is on the back lower hand corner of the VIS sheet. To make sure the office has the most current VIS forms, call the State Health Department or refer to the CDC website where these forms are regularly updated. Vaccine vials should always be handled and stored properly to maintain the ability to fight the disease. Outside of immunizations, we also test patients for lead paint exposure. This is very common in rural areas such as Wisconsin as lead paint is still around in well waters or old farmhouses. High lead levels can result in serious brain injury, including seizures, coma, and death. Lower levels can cause learning problems, stunted growth, and behavior disorders. Lead-based paint in homes and on imported toys and chronic lead exposure and contaminated dust are the most common causes. Lead screening is typically done at one to two years old. Sick child visits. The medical assistant frequently is the first point of contact for the sick child or the caregiver, usually by telephone. It is important to screen calls and get the onset of the symptoms, the frequency, the duration, and any other changes in the child's health. Determine whether the child should be seen immediately or if a problem can wait for an opening in the schedule. Many times children with diarrhea more than six stools in 12 hours or vomiting and diarrhea for a 24 hour period total should be seen right away. If a child is under two years and the parent report, reports frequent crying, lethargy, vomiting, diarrhea, and or fever of 103 or higher, have the child seen right away. 
and some physicians actually request to see children with a fever of 101 or higher right away. And this will depend on the individual clinic that you work in. The medical assistant's role in pediatric procedures is to assist the pediatrician with examinations, upgrade patient histories, perform ordered screening tests, administer immunizations, and measure and weigh children as needed, and to provide the patient and caregiver support. Procedures that may be performed for well child visits may include but are not limited to tests such as a vision test using the Snellen chart or the Jaeger chart, and a hearing test. Develop a relationship with the pediatric patient that encourages cooperation and compliance. Oftentimes, I usually get my patient involved in their care. I let them pump up the blood pressure cuff or play with the bulb of the blood pressure cuff to get them involved in their care. Use a firm, direct approach about expected behavior and offer sincere praise. If you do not do this right off the bat, it will be hard to contain the child in their behavior. Explain each step in simple terms and offer choices if possible. Do not use medical terminology. Measurements. We record measurements such as head circumference, height, and weight on the growth chart. Head circumferences are typically done first before the height and weight. This is done to gain the most cooperation as sometimes it can be difficult to get a head circumference on a child that is constantly moving. Head circumferences are done up until the age of 36 months and we do this to check for hydrocephaly or microcephaly. It is important when taking a head circumference to be careful around the fontanelles or the soft spots in the head of a child. Head circumferences are taken at the largest point of the child's head, so just above the brow and then around the back at the largest point. BMI growth charts can be done starting at age two. And when we weigh the child, it is important to have the diaper off in all other clothing and then have this placed back on the child after the weight is done. Assisting the examination. So vital signs are measured first. Blood pressure measurements are not included in most pediatric examinations. However, there is a movement to start doing blood pressures at the age of three due to the increase in childhood obesity. Stand at the head of the table and support the young child's head between the hands during the physician's exam. Be patient, explain procedures, and respect privacy. Obtaining a urine sample. Oftentimes to obtain a urine sample, this sometimes will be done at home by the parent if the child is toilet trained. Pediatric urine collection devices for younger children are secured to the child and the diaper is put over it. We oftentimes call these wee bags. Occasionally catheterization may be necessary and must be a sterile procedure. Injury prevention. Unintentional injuries are the leading cause of death and disability in children in the U.S. Motor vehicle accidents, drownings, burns, falls, poisons, aspiration with airway obstruction, and firearm incidents are the most common. Make sure the ambulatory care environment is safe and that parents are educated about potential hazards at home. The adolescent patient, gather details about diet and exercise, screen for height, weight, and possible sexually transmitted diseases, review vaccination history, and assess for high-risk behaviors. Common problems include eating disorders, obesity, 
and injury-related problems due to sports. Look for signs of depression, the intent to commit suicide, or isolating behaviors. Oftentimes, you will notice a change in the patient's appearance, change in patient's friends, their eating habits may change. These are all signs of depression or the intent to commit suicide. Child abuse, all threats to a child's physical or mental welfare must be reported. Reported abuse will be considered confidential information. If you suspect abuse, consult your pediatrician or physician immediately. Follow state and local reporting protocols. Usually this entails co contacting law enforcement and social services for an investigation. Signs of childhood abuse are the obvious signs, such as you go to touch the child and they shy away. Examination findings such as bruises, black eyes, changes in behaviors, sometimes they will be very outrageous in their behavior or they may be um, much, much quieter and changes in those types of behaviors and personalities are a key indicator. And then physical indicators, broken bones, black eyes, that sort of thing. Patient education, provide the parents with information to help them understand the child's behavior and improve parenting skills. Use the waiting room space for information on child's health issues and community resources. Educate regarding tissue use for blowing your nose, care when sharing toys, and good hand washing practices. Legal and ethical issues. Our law views children as a distinct group and laws and customs have been established that deal with the protection of children's rights. Legal and ethical issues arise and office staff may be faced with an ethical situation. Physicians make the final decision regarding these ethical issues.